So what's going to happen to a light ray that is coming in like this and it hits this lens? Does it go, does it get deflected towards the uh, center of the diverging lens or away from it? Should be away, right? So that light ray is going to change direction. It's, instead of going this way, it's going to be bent a little bit this way, right? It's going to move away from the optical axis. It will move away from the optical axis. The same thing is going to happen to this guy. So if you draw those two lines with that behavior, they would intersect somewhere here. They would normally have intersected here, but after the diverging lens causes them to move away from the optical axis, they will intersect somewhere here. So it pushes them that way. Right? So B is, uh, is the A, right answer. But D could also happen. So under what conditions would this be true? <coughs> yeah. If one's too strong enough to bend the rays parallel. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So a light ray, as I said, this light ray will be bent away away from the center of lens too, right? So away means this way, but it could be that much, right? That's not impossible. In fact, that's what would happen. If this light ray is heading straight to the focal point of lens 2 over here, if they're heading that way, that is a principal light ray. The principal light ray that does that turns uh, parallel on the other side. All right, so uh, B and D are correct. They are related. <coughs> we, can, uh, we can take a look at that and see if we can deduce that also from the equation. The setup is, uh, as we just saw, we have a converging lens, a diverging lens. The light rays are coming in parallel, so I'm going to assume that the distance to the object is infinity. Okay, so the object is very far away from this system of two lenses. I'm going to assume that the distance between them is L. And this is the focal length, uh, focal point of lens A. There will be another one over here, of course. And this is the focal point of lens B. There's another one over here. So in general, that's the setup, right? And we're going to try to find, figure out where is the distance of the point where the light rays intersect after they've gone through both lenses. What is that distance? First question is, what is this distance from A? center of A to the point where they would have intersected. <clears throat> you can use, uh, you already know what the answer is without an equation, but if you want to use the equation, it would be 1 over FA plus 1 over SOA plus 1 over SIA. The um, distance at which the object is, the object of length A is, is infinity. So you're going to replace infinity here. Okay. This is the distance where you're going to find these light rays intersecting, right? That's the distance of the image. You can think of the object as being very far away and the point where they intersect is the, the image. So from this equation you get 1 over SIA should be equal to 1 over FA, which means what you already knew. These light rays are going to focus a distance from the lens equal to the focal length. That's the definition of focal length. Move on to the next lens. What is the equation for the next lens? Well, that lens has a, it's a diverging lens, so I'm going to take these f's to be positive numbers, so I have to put a minus sign there to indicate that it's a diverging lens, right? So 1 over fb, then you're going to have the distance between the object lens and lens b. Now, now, which one is the object of lens b? The object of lens B is the image of lens A produced an image over here. This is going to be the object of this guy. All right? Remember that. That's the rule. The image of the previous optical element is the object of the following optical element. That distance seems to be. FA is the length of this piece. From here to here you have FA distance. And from here to here you have L. Therefore, Fa minus L. 
correct? So that's the distance between the uh, object of lens B and lens B. But notice that I put a minus sign there. If I'm going to use the thin lens equation correctly, I need to be careful with the sign of objects and the sign of images. This is the object of lens B and the question is whether that object is real or virtual. Whether that object is located downstream from lens B or upstream from lens B. It is downstream, right? If you're standing at lens B, the downstream direction is determined by the direction in which the light rays are going from object to observer. So this is the downstream direction. The object of lens B in this case is found downstream instead of the normal, usual upstream. In this case, it's downstream. Okay? The rule is if you have a downstream object, you're going to use a minus sign for the distance of that object. Okay? So you stick a minus sign there and you plug that in this equation. So that's what you would put in that equation that, I, that you had before. This is the thin lens equation for lens B. And this is the, with the minus, is the distance of the object of lens B, which is that distance over there. Now, uh, that equation has a lot of uh, different variables there. Let's just look at one specific case, which is, uh, has to do with the previous, que the conceptual question, which is, I'm going to set up the image of lens A to be at the location of the focal point of lens B. So the place where these light rays would intersect if there was no diverging lens, that point is going to coincide with the uh, focal point of lens B. Okay, so what I'm saying in terms of an equation is FA minus L, which is this distance, is equal to the focal length of B. Okay, this distance I'm going to set up to be equal to, so I'm going to adjust these lenses until that condition is satisfied. So let's see what the equation says about the location of the final image. So you plug that in. So FA is actually FB. So you get minus 1 over FB on this side. This term turns into 1 over minus FB. 1 over S I B. These two terms are identical, therefore they cancel. And the answer is, or the, the, uh, the solution for the distance at which the image of uh, lens B is going to be formed is infinity. So the light rays were heading this way. You put this diverging lens at the right place where the focal point of that lens coincides with the point where these light rays were uh, heading to and the light rays are going to turn parallel. The image, that's another wor uh, way to say that the image is formed at infinity. This statement that the distance is, uh, of the image is at infinity and the light rays coming out parallel are the same. They're the same statement. They're equivalent. So for this particular setup, the light rays do not intersect after they pass through the diverging lens, which was the option D that we had, right? But if that's not true, if this lens is a little further this way, then they still intersect, which was answer B. All right? So this uh, setup, it's called a beam reducer. Uh, you would have a laser beam and you want to reduce the size of the laser beam. You want to focus, uh, concentrate the laser beam. Maybe you want to, you have a smaller optical element and the light beam that you have is too wide. So most of it misses the lens that you have because it's a very small lens, you want to compress the laser light, make it smaller. This will do that. All right? This is the laser light with these two set up that way. The laser light that exits, the width of the beam will be smaller than the incoming beam. You can also make it expand. <clears throat> Think about what uh, you would do here to make the uh, beam actually expand. Be bigger here than here.
There's some tricky issues about um, ray tracing when you have virtual objects. So this is a problem that deals with that. You will find that in one of the uh, homeworks from previous years. This is an optical element B, it's a diverging lens in this case. And it intersects light rays that were heading to this point. Okay, so if you were to take away lens B, those light rays would intersect here and this is where you would have an image of the object. So there must be some other optical element, A, placed somewhere here that is making these light rays go that way. Right? That's not shown in the picture, but that it's assumed. Something else caused these light rays to uh, head that way, producing an image, and they would produce an image here. But you intersect those light rays with a diverging lens. So the question is, find the final image. If you had some numbers, you would do it with the thin lens equation, right? If you have its distance, you will plug that in with a minus sign for being a virtual object, and you will find the answer for, if you knew the focal length of this, you will find the location of the image, right? But doing ray tracing, what would you do? Let's start with the easy one of the two. What's going to happen to this light ray? The one that hits the center of a lens does nothing. It just keeps going, right? So this light ray, I could have drawn a continuous line, a solid line, because that light ray is going to continue going. Right? Okay. What about this guy? What does a diverging lens do to a light ray that is parallel to the optical axis? Bends it away. And it bends it away in a specific way. It seems to be coming from the near focal point. So this light ray should be deflected in a way such that it seems to be coming from there. So it's going to go like this. Right? And now where is the, where's going to be the final image of this? It's going to be at the point where this line intersects that line. Correct? So if you're an observer over here, you will see, you will, uh, the eye, your eyes will receive light rays. This light ray would keep going. And the other light ray that you, that you will receive, imagine a huge eye here that can intersect both of the light rays. So one goes this way. The other light ray is going to go this way. And it seems to be coming. They both seem to be coming from a common point, which will be somewhere over here. <clears throat> I think I have a picture of that in the next page. So that will be the location of the final image of this system. <coughs> now it is something uh, curious or strange, depending on how familiar you are with, with diverging lenses, which is that the image, if this is the object of the diverging lens, notice that the image is inverted. And it kind of looks bigger also. If you're familiar, if you've been working with, uh, with diverging lenses, uh, with real objects, this would seem strange. Because every time you did, you work with a diverging lens and a real object, your image was always what? <coughs> the image was virtual. It is virtual here too. So that's not a difference with this specific. But the image was smaller, right? And it was upright also. This image is virtual because you see this light ray doesn't really go that way. Seems to be coming from that point. Okay. So uh, what I'm trying to tell you is that when the object of a lens is virtual, when the object is virtual, the rules that you might have memorized about whether it's going to be smaller or virtual or upright or so on, they will not apply. Okay. It can ha you can have it. You, it, anything can happen, basically. You could have any final image that is bigger than the virtual object that you have. Your final image might be uh, inverted as we, with respect to that one. All of the possibilities can, uh, can happen. 
depending on the specific setup of the problem. <clears throat> it is only when you have real objects that you have these common these rules that we've looked at, which is uh, what we mentioned before, right? Diverging lens, always upright, always smaller. Uh, converging lens, if you're far away, then it's inverted. And if you uh, pass the focal point, then it's upright and virtual. Those rules will not apply if you're dealing with a virtual object. One application of this is the focal length of a combination of two lenses if they're thin and if they're really close together. If there is not an appreciable distance between them, what is the what is the um, the focal length of the combination of the two lenses? That's an important question, right? Sometimes you have maybe two weak lenses and you need more power, right? Would you combine it? If you put them together, would you have more power? Less? Right? So, this is the focal point of lens 1. This is the focal point of lens 2. And the question is, where is going to be, where are these light rays that are coming in parallel, where are they going to be focused? Because that will be the focal uh, length of the combination of these two lenses. It could be here, it could be here, it could be here. We don't know until we go through the problem, right? But in general, it will be in some other place. <clears throat> so let's just use thin lens equation for these two guys. We do know that parallel light rays are going to be focused after they go through the first lens, they're going to be uh, sent to this point. Right? That's where the image under the first lens is going to be. That image becomes the object of lens number two. Okay? So the first part of the calculation, we already went through it. We know that the image is going to be of lens one is going to be over here, so we know that. Now let's move on to the next lens. The equation for that, le for that lens says 1 over f2 equals 1 over the distance of the object of lens 2 to lens 2, right? 1 over that distance. Well, if I know that uh, the object of lens 2 is the same as the image of lens 1, that distance is going to be f1, but I plug in a minus sign one more time because it's a virtual object. The object here, the object of lens 2 is occurring downstream from lens 2. That is not the normal place where an object would be, right? An object normally will be upstream, sending light toward the optical element. In this case, that object, because there is a previous lens that did that job, uh, that object is downstream from lens 2. So that has to go in your equation with a minus sign. The distance is f1, but you have to plug, it in, plug in a minus sign. <clears throat> and then the distance where the final image is going to be is what I call, that's what we uh, want to call, the focal length of the combination of the two lenses. <clears throat> right? Because if parallel light rays have to go through these two converge at this point, that's what you call the focal length of that system. So, uh, if you set up that, you're almost done. You just solve for this side and you get 1 over the focal length of the combination is 1 over F1 plus 1 over F2. <clears throat> this equation implies this. The focal length of the combination is smaller than either one of the two focal lengths of the lenses that make up the system. Okay, hope you see that from this equation. Right? <clears throat> this is, by the way, the same uh, behavior that you're going to find in an electrical circuit when, uh, with regards to resistances. When they're in parallel, that's what you're going to find. But we'll get there in two weeks. No, more. In a month. Anyway, so, um, so that's the equation that tells you what's the focal length of two lenses when they're close together.